the World Economic Forum's agenda for ESG, environmental, social, and governance seems to be the talk of town for the great resetters. They claim that businesses and corporations need to do a better job at promoting practices that benefit the social issues and the environment. I mean, the World Economic Forum clearly cares oh so deeply about the environment, and they are definitely not calling for billions of dollars to be awarded to select companies and their own members to benefit from. Come on, what would they do that? I mean, they're all good people. They deeply care about the environment. <laughs> Well, let's go and take a closer look at the push for the ESG standards. Is it actually for the protection of the environment, or is it an elaborate money play so that the only few benefit from the scheme? And for those that aren't familiar with what an ESG is, it stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. According to Investopedia, ESG criteria are a set of standards for a company's behavior used by socially conscious investors to screen potential investment. And our friends over at the World Economic Forum are obsessed with the ESG standards. So much so that nearly every member of corporations rave about it on their websites. Companies like BlackRock, Microsoft, Apple, and Salesforce consistently appear in the top 10 best ESG companies on CNBC and Investor.com's list. And obviously, guys, it has nothing to do with the fact that, I mean, zero, no correlation at all, that these CEOs of these companies are agenda contributors for the World Economic Forum. No correlation, not at all, zero, eh. Coincidence, I think not. But as my research team and I dig deeper into this whole ESG standard and it's oh so deep and tender care for the environment, we started to find things that made us question whether the ESG actually cares about the environment. Or is there something else? For one, Tesla, arguably the leading EV manufacturing car company, is nowhere to be found on any of the top ESG company lists. And as we all know, the CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, is big on climate change and environmental protection. So much so that Elon launched a $100 million prize for carbon removal last year, and even partnered with Google to contribute to technologies that promise to undo climate change. Yet, Standards & Poor S&P ESG Index recently kicked Tesla out of its list. So apparently, Tesla isn't ESG enough. Here's what a CNBC article says about why. It, referring to S&P ESG index, said that Tesla's lack of low carbon strategy and code of business conduct along with racism and poor working conditions reported at Tesla's factory in Fremont, California affected the score. So you're telling me that none of the other car manufacturers on the ESG list like Ford Motors and GM have a better low carbon strategy? and a better working condition? I mean, even companies like Uber is on the top 100 best ESG company list. Don't they have like thousands of drivers that drive cars that emit carbon? Man, this is really confusing. And how the heck did ExxonMobil and Amazon make it on the top 10 list of the S&P ESG index? First of all, ExxonMobil's number one product is literally carbon, and it's not like they're making solar panels or anything. And Amazon, don't they have problems with the work conditions too? Like they made documentaries about it. People were receiving disciplinaries for taking toilet breaks. So what is it? Is ESG anti-carbon or not? I mean, seriously. But what's more interesting is that months before Tesla was kicked out of the S&P ESG index, Musk had a bit of a feud with Klaus Schwab's adopted brother, Joe Biden. On March 1st, 2022, Biden tweeted to commend Ford and GM for investing billions of dollars to building electric vehicles. Never once, Tesla was mentioned, to which Musk fired back with his own tweet by saying that Tesla invested more than double of that GM and Ford combined when it comes to manufacturing electric vehicles. That's not all. Biden had continued to ignore Tesla and Elon Musk by not inviting Elon to the EV summit held at the White House earlier this year. And it wasn't until an online petition that forced Biden's hand to finally recognize Tesla's achievement by simply calling it our nation's largest electric vehicle manufacturer. Oh, and the uh, members of the World Economic Forum care so much about the environment that the annual meeting in Davos draws around 1,300 private jets that clearly emit carbon. Not to mention the ride to and from the airport and of course the $50 burrito. I guess walking to mortar was not an option. I have Sauron. So it's pretty clear on what this ESG standard is all about. It's just an elitist club consisting big, great reset corporations that are playing the climate car to be in, so to speak. I think George Carlin said it the best. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. And it's also clear that in order for a company to be considered in the ESG list, the CEO of the company has to A, be part of the World Economic Forum, B, 
be best friends with Klaus Schwab, and C, don't mock Schwab's less intelligent brother, Biden. And clearly, Elon Musk failed that letter C. Okay, then what is then the purpose of this ESG country club? I mean, why would a corporation care to join such a club? Well, here's why. First, having an ESG standard makes it pretty clear for the World Economic Forumites to know who's on their side or not. And based on who's on their side, it's pretty easy to award corporate handouts and subsidies. SBA, the Small Business Administration here in the United States, even has grants and loans for companies with environmental causes. And one Harvard Business Review article points out that there's been a trillion dollars of investment funds that went into ESG companies over the last two years. Also, an article written by an agency that partners private and public sectors also paints a future where government contracts are awarded to companies based on their ESG standards. So to unpack this a little bit more, just imagine where a company is required to turn in a scorecard that shows their carbon footprint, impact on social justice issues, among other things, to be awarded for a government contract. It's also entirely possible to see big corporations receive tax credits and breaks based on their ESG performance each year, which means a company like Tesla, who's recently kicked out of the ESG index, would not receive a tax break or credit at all. Well, because, you know, Biden got bullied by Elon, and Biden had to run to his uncle, Klaus Schwab. Also not surprising is that the U.S. Congress, specifically the House, passed an ESG climate disclosure rule for public companies. If this disclosure requirement actually goes through the Senate and ultimately Biden signs it, the law will force all public companies to disclose their impact on the ESG standards, which means that public companies will be assigned an ESG score that can ultimately influence investment decisions. Now, you might be saying, well, who cares? It's not gonna like affect my 401k or my brokerage account, right? Well, what if I told you that your brokerage might already be grading your investment decisions based on the ESG metric? Or here's another fact. More than 35% of all stocks and shareholder voting are owned by BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, which are all pro Great Reset companies. Which means anytime BlackRock, State Street, or Vanguard makes a big leap in the market, the entire market, including you, will absolutely feel it. So imagine if these large investment companies only promote investments that are favorable to the ESG standards. Wouldn't that basically devalue the non ESG companies? Right? And remember, we already talked about how the ESG lovers don't really care about the environment. It's basically a racket or a front for the elitists to collect government subsidies and attract exclusive investments so that they can continue profiting off of a cost. What this ultimately means is that the world's top three investment companies are feeding investment capital to those that only obey their standards. All of this boils down to one thing, and it's about control. You know, it's kind of like one of those fake TV pastors that use God to collect donations, but all they care about is their pocketbooks. Put some anointing on his money! And uh, the yacht that he calls uh, the Ark. So if your 401k or your investment decisions don't align with that of the ESG standards, you basically don't get the benefit from the boost you would get from BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. And this is especially going to get tougher on Main Street small business owners if there comes a time where all businesses have to follow an ESG standard. It will undoubtedly put a financial burden on the little guys like us. And listen, I'm not anti-environment or anti-climate. I'm just anti-profiteering and anti-scam. Heck, even Elon Musk calls ESG a scam, and I quote, ESG is a scam. It has been weaponized by phony social justice warriors. I mean, he, he kind of has a point there. I mean, honestly, I do agree with some of the ESG standards, such as having a safe working condition, not leaving your people stranded, and making sure that everyone in the company has a voice and not just the top elitist who meets once a year in Davos. But clearly, the members of the World Economic Forum is pushing the ESG standards only because it's a source for profit and control and not actually caring about the cause at all. Speaking of control, what if I told you that the World Economic Forum just confirmed a way to take a complete control over your money by potentially causing a dollar crash and instituting a plan for a one world currency? This agenda was talked heavily by the members of the World Economic Forum in the recent Davos meeting. So if you wanna see what they're planning, click on this video right here to see exactly what they're doing to take full control over your money and your financial freedoms.